Okay, here we go. What's going on guys welcome back to another tutorial uh, i'm finally back with another video for you guys on how to make a beat for pierre born before we get into the video i just wanted to let you guys know that i just recently dropped my red on red free loop kit which uh, i'm going to link in the description you can download it for free uh, it's on my website and my beat stars page i have another loop kit in the works that's going to be done very very soon so make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on instagram for all the latest updates on what i'm going to be dropping i'm going to be doing a lot more loop kits and tutorials in the future just like this one so if you want to get in on some more loop kits and more of these videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video with that being said guys let's get into fl studio and i can show you guys how it's done the first thing you gotta do is open the fortnite plugin it's all right, so uh, we're in FL Studio now. Um, I picked out a couple of sounds from a couple of different plugins that I thought really kind of got that Pierre, Pierre Bourne type of sound. Um, I got this one in Purity called Synth Key One, and then I laid down this chord progression right here. With Pierre Bourne type beats, you want to keep the chord progressions like just super simple. You don't want to go like really overboard with like your melody. You want to go white girl basic with it. So you just want to keep it, you know, real simple. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna use like a second note to kind of give it a weird delay effect. Ooh, that sounds fire! I think I'm just gonna do that throughout the whole pattern. There's this plugin uh, called SQ8L. Shout out, uh, I think it's Georgie uh, from Internet Money. He uh, put out a tutorial showing off this plugin a while ago, but this is a really good Pierre Bourne plugin. It has a lot of good Pierre Bourne type sounds and it's free. Um, so just, just Google SQ8L, but shout out, I think it's Georgie from 808 Money. Or 808 Money. 808 Money, Internet Money. Oh my gosh, I'm never getting signed to either of those labels. <laughs> I think I'm gonna add one or two more sounds into this and I think that's pretty much all I want to do for the melody You want to just pretty much layer a bunch of different sounds. You can keep it really simple Bruh I think that's a pretty good pattern so far. Um, I'm gonna play it through one more time for you guys. Uh, I ended up adding in this other synth sound that I recorded. I played out MIDI and then uh, rendered it out to this. So this is what it sounds like all together, all the melody pieces. Alright, so now that I think the melody is pretty much done, I think I'm going to mix it all together, make, add some effects maybe, and then I'll go to the drums after that. Um, I like to mix in mono. I don't... I see a lot of... a couple other people do it, but I think it's just personal preference when you're leveling and mixing your stuff in mono and EQing. It's just... I don't know. To me, it, I think it always sounds better, but if you want to mix in stereo, you can do your pretty little thing too. I'm not going to judge you either. What is that oh my god what was that noise another really cool plugin that you can use um if you want to have good like panning on your melodies is pancake or pancake 2 i think it's pretty much going to do it automatically it's going to pan um, whatever you have in the track just to left and right. Um, so I'll play it, put it in the stereo and I'll play it for you guys. It 
sounds pretty dope. So I, I like doing that on really repetitive melodies. I think that sounds really cool. All right, now that I think we got the melody pretty much mixed and all done, I think I'm gonna go in and add the drums. Let's just uh, use a secret drum kit. So for the hi-hats, um, what you want to do is you want to kind of keep it really simple. Um, with, you know, you can go just two-step because Pierre does a lot of that, you know, basic stuff sometimes. One really useful thing you can do for your hi-hats, um, I always do this in every single one of my beats, is uh, you go up to this magnet looking thingy and you make sure you're in a third step and it just gives you a different bounce for the pattern um, instead of being in fourth normally i think it's in like fourth step maybe half step but i think doing this you get kind of like those triplet rolls you hear in a lot of popular trap kind of hi-hat patterns so i think it sounds really nice so for the 808s um sometimes pierre kind of goes um it's, it depends he kind of keeps it simple but sometimes he'll go crazy with the 808s definitely not like jetson made level like crazy but um he usually follows the root note but sometimes it it's music it's okay to go out of the root note if it sounds good it doesn't really matter um i like to kind of follow the root note for some of the basic hits and then outside of that i like to go outside the box which you'll kind of see here as i'm drawing it out All right, I think I got the drum pattern pretty much set. I think I'm going to go ahead and mix all this together then. Another uh, kind of quick tip you can do in FL Studio to kind of beef up your 808s. The sample's already kind of pretty good en enough on its own. But if sometimes, let's say you're working with some not so good drum samples, um, what you can do is uh, click on your 808 and then go over to this little light bulb um, where it says pre-computed effects. And then this little boost knob, um, as you can see, it's already moving the waveform with just a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy, otherwise you're going to blow your drums out. But uh, just a little boost sometimes will kind of make it fatter even more. So it depends on what kind of beats you're looking at, but a lot of beer born beats um, just have an 808. They don't even have a kick in them. Um, it's up to, again, it's music. It doesn't really matter, but um, I think I'm not going to put a kick in this beat just because I like how the, the way that the 808 sounds. Me personally, something that I do when I'm mixing it then, if it's going to be a beat without a kick um, and it's just going to be out like a really hard Zaytoven 808. Um, I make sure I turn it up just a little bit more. You don't want to go too crazy, but turn it up more. And then I guess I would say EQ a little bit more of those kind of like punchier frequencies so that uh, you're not really missing a lot of those kickier things that you would normally have um, in. Bro, what are you talking about, man? You want to make sure that you enhance some of those punchier frequencies in your 808 if you're not going to put a kick in there. Otherwise, your beats are just going to sound really like dead and the 808s aren't going to hit as hard as they should be. So uh, you're going to put your fruity limiter. I kind of combine this with the way that Nick Mira does his uh, mastering slash mixing, which I saw in another tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so on your master channel, uh, you're going to put a fruity limiter and then if you're going to get your drums to kind of clip so that they hit even harder. What you want to do is then in your fruity limiter, this is the default sound. So you're going to want to, in this envelope section, you're going to want to turn all these all the way down and then with the ceiling you're going to want to turn it down until it kind of you can hear it clipping but you don't want to do it too much and then 
then once you've done that, you can take any kind of like mastering plugin you have, and then I use Maximus, um, and then make sure you're on this master one, and then I turn all these down, turn the threshold to 1% up in this top corner, and then with this post knob, just turn your beat up. And then what I do, you don't have to do this if you're better at mastering than me, is I put a fruity soft clipper after all that to make sure there's absolutely nothing going above zero dB. But that's just me. That's just a personal mixing habit that I have. All right, guys, so I think that's pretty much all I've got for today. Um, it's super simple beats, um, you know, with Pierre Bourne, when you're doing the arrangement, you want to keep it super, super simple. Um, you don't got to do anything too crazy. It's just pretty much all about sound selection and getting the right simple melodies that all kind of work with each other. So with that being said, uh, make sure you guys leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be having a lot more tutorials and loop kits coming in the future. So if you don't want to miss out, uh, go follow me on Instagram as well. And with that being said, guys, uh, I will see you on the next video. Peace. Right, oh, this is crazy.